Welcome to Influencers, where we bring you the people that influence our city, our community, and our state. Today we have U.S. Senator Dean Heller. Thanks for having me part of your show. Pleasure. So let's tell us about a little bit about yourself, you know? How did you get to Nevada, your family? Tell us all about that. Well, I've lived in uh, Nevada basically since I was nine months old. Can't say I was born here, but since I was about nine, which, you know, which makes you pretty native uh, around these parts. Uh, but needless to say, my father was an auto mechanic when I was growing up, and uh, my mom was a school cook. Wow. So they both worked very hard, as you can imagine. Uh, and, uh, you know, you own your own business, small business like this, it, you know, sometimes it takes 50, 60, 70 hours of work a week in order to keep things uh, running smoothly. And my dad was no exception to that. So for 30 or 40 years, he worked that hard. Wow. But, uh, you know, he had me in the shop, sweeping the floor. Uh, I'd graduate to taking transmissions out and putting them back in. Then I'd graduate to his engine shop. And, you know, it all played well at the end. You know, I uh, know the uh, what it takes. And uh, my father taught us. And I had to be in that garage if I wasn't uh, in school or yeah. playing sports. So. And who do you think's had the most influence on your life, both career-wise and personal? Well, I think I have to mention that uh, my father probably uh, uh, personally. Um, I remember coming home from dates when I was in high school, uh, and uh, I'd get home, about, or I'd, I'd drive down Main Street uh, in Carson City and see his shop lights still on, and he was still working wow. at midnight. I'd drop my date off and leap the fence and go in there and keep him company for a while before he went home. So, you know, watching someone work that hard every day, to uh, keep uh, six kids happy. That's beautiful. Um, it's, uh, it, it's quite the teaching moment, but uh, uh, politically, you know, we lost them. We lost my uh, political mentor a couple days ago, and that was uh, Senator Laxalt. Yeah. You know, Laxalt and I went to the same high school, um, I, and I love the fact that that high school is the home of the senators. You know, so you have Laxalt, myself, and of course Amade went to the That's same right. high school also. People wonder what what's in the water, you know, at that high school. But needless to say, uh, Paul Laxalt was a great influence on me. Yeah. And uh, my uh, mother, of course, knew him growing up and uh, spent a lot of time with the family. So it was close. It was close to the family. All of his uh, kids, his nieces yeah. and nephews and all that, we all went to high school together. So anyway, we'll miss, uh, we'll miss Senator Laxalt. And Senator, you've done a lot for Nevada, in Nevada. Tell us about the journey to become a U.S. Senator. Well, you know, I, uh, I went to school in Southern California, um, and uh, actually two of my kids were born in Southern California. Got to the point where I, I realized that that's not where I wanted to raise those kids. I wanted to raise them in Nevada, so we came back and worked in the state treasurer's office. Uh, they needed someone that invested the state funds, and uh, they knew my background in securities. I worked on the exchange, stock exchange, and all that, so I agreed to do that, and uh, here, here was the change. I worked for a state treasurer that uh, got in a fight with the chairman of Ways and Means. And I wasn't probably in that office for more than two or three months. And uh, they got in a fight and the treasurer said, I'm not going back. Heller, it's yours. Never been involved in political process at all. Never been involved in the legislative process. And I had to carry the water for the state treasurer's office uh, for the rest of the session. And that was an eye opener. And I did it. I said, I think I can do this. And I uh, got a phone call from uh, the minority leader at the time. I said, hey, uh, you're good at this. Would you mind running for the legislature? And that's how it started in 1990. Wow. I put my name on the ballot and, and uh, served, started in the 91 session. And the rest is history. Yeah. Yep. From there, Secretary of State. That's right. From there to Congress and now the United States Senate. More in a moment with our U.S. Senator, Dean Heller. Thank you. Welcome back to Influencers, again here with U.S. Senator Dean Heller. About the Senate, tell us about what the Senate does that people might not know about. What's your day like? Well, Peter, you know, th there is a lot more good things and bad things that happens in the United States Senate, but you wouldn't know that uh, listening to the news. You know, the, the news exists now uh, based on conflict. You know, they want bad news. Uh, they, I guess they believe they can't sell good news, and maybe they're right. But uh, all they tell you is the negative things that go on in Washington, D.C. There's a lot of bipartisanship back there. Um, if you take a look at any ranking, uh, when it comes to the 100 senators uh, back in uh, Nevada, I rank about fifth 
overall in bipartisanship. So I'll work with uh, any senator um, on either side that has a, a, a good idea, and I have, and uh, to the benefit of Nevada, mm -hmm. to the benefit of our veterans, um, to the benefit of small businesses. And you absolutely have. You have. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's been Includes, held against you. Including immigration reform. Yeah. I took a lot of heat for immigration right. reform. But it was the right thing to do. It was good for Las Vegas. It was good for the state of Nevada. Frankly, I thought it was good for the country. But there are some real opportunities to do good things as long as you're not rigid uh, in your approach. And sometimes not being rigid, you know, you, you take some heat for that. That's right. And uh, I'm fine with that. I'll take the heat as long as we get good things done and uh, the benefit to my constituents are there. You know, Senator, I personally know that you have a real love for the small business, for the small business person, um, and I want to stay on that theme. So how can you help the small business community in Nevada as a U.S. Senator? Make sure that they have money to expand. You know, at the end of the day, uh, most small businesses need small business loans. Think about the recession that we went through and what it did to this community. Uh, it wiped out. It wiped us out. It wiped out every small bank, every community bank. Uh, we lost 50% of the small banks. And this is the way I look at it, Peter. If you're a small bank, you loan to small businesses. If you're a medium-sized bank, you lend to medium-sized companies. Right. And if you're a large bank, of course, you lend to, um, to, to large uh, businesses. Imagine what happens when we lose 50% of the community banks and small banks in the state of Nevada. And that's what happened during the recession. Now they're popping up again. And look at the impact that it has had. Uh, and we were able to do that through tax reform. We were able to achieve that through banking reform. Um, and uh, the opportunity, the Small Business uh, 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 Loan Act uh, that I passed, uh, which gave small businesses an alternative route now to get capital to start their businesses up, look at the difference it's making. And I'll tell you, the driver, the driver of all this is the Latin Chamber. The Latin Chamber and these small businesses that are coming to Southern Nevada, proportionately, a large proportion of that is the Hispanic community. I appreciate you saying that. And we know that. It's true. And, and you need people in Washington, D.C. that do understand that. Uh, immigration reform is good for the country. Immigration reform is good for Nevada. Uh, we have to do it right. And there is a right way to do it. Both sides need to come together and solve this. And I supported it in the past. I will support it in the future, and there's a right way of doing this, and a good way to do this, and, and, and I'm looking for those answers. How can the small business community help you? What do you need from us? Well, I need them to thrive. That's what I need. I need small businesses to thrive, because the, the, the public will see that. The public notices right now that we're at 4.1% GDP. To. They know that. In fact, I would make this argument, Peter, that I believe the GDP in Nevada, and I haven't seen the numbers, have to be a point or two, maybe three, higher than what the national average is right now. Um, the uh, Latin community, the, uh, the uh, African American community, they're thriving right yes. now under this new economy. And the question is, is how do I make it sustainable? Because if we're able to do this for a number of years in the future, wow. um, I know that, uh, that uh, politically I'm healthy also. If small business is healthy politically, I'm healthy. More with Senator Dean Heller in a moment. Hello, welcome back to Influencers. Senator, Tell us what your plans are if you're successful with your campaign. Well, if I'm successful, go back there and do the three things that we're supposed to do as a United States Senator. You know, one is to keep America safe. My number one responsibility, I don't care what the issues are, the number one responsibility is for a mother to know that they can go to a soccer game or they can drop their kids off to school and know that those children will be safe. That's, That's my right. number one responsibility. So. I'll always, uh, I'll always keep that in mind. Number two, infrastructure. We've got this freeway between uh, right. Las Vegas and Phoenix, to me, is my number one priority uh, when it does come to infrastructure. And uh, I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can to make that come to fruition, maybe 10 years before it actually will. We're doing a great job on our side. It's the, uh, yeah. it's the Arizona side that I'm a little frustrated with uh, and their progress, but Nevada's doing a great job. And then third, of, uh, I will always work with the veterans and the veterans community, but I want to keep Yucca Mountain out of the state. And I believe I'm the only person that can stop it. I'm the uh, only person out of 100 people in Washington, D.C. that can keep Yucca Mountain out of Nevada. And there would be nothing more devastating for this community 
if we were to bring truckloads of uh, nuclear waste through this community I can't imagine. for the next 50 years. Yeah. For the next 50 years, can't we'll have truckloads of waste coming through this, uh, this Hopefully city. Hopefully you're pushing that more because people need to understand, uh, r even regardless of politics, right? Right, right. You got to have a senior senator with some seniority up there to, to block him out. And I can tell you that makes a big difference. Makes a big difference uh, uh, for those that are on the proper co uh, committees. Now we talked a little bit about infrastructure, how important that is. I sit on three of the four committees that infrastructure wow. projects go through. It has to go through the Commerce Committee. It goes through the Banking Committee, and it goes through uh, it goes through the Finance Committee, and then it goes to the floor. So I have four opportunities to make changes wow. on any transportation bill that comes through Congress. And trust me, I take advantage of that. That's important. How closely do you does you does you and your office work with gaming, construction industry here in Nevada? Well, the three things, gaming, construction, and mining. Those are the three largest industries. Obviously, the service industry uh, is critical um, uh, for the health of this state. Very, very close. You know, I will, I will bend over backwards to make sure that the businesses in the state, small businesses and large businesses, thrive. Of course. And I'm doing that, both ends of the state. Call my office if you have questions, concerns, if you need grants, uh, if you're looking for capital, we'll point you in the right direction. That's my job. Constituency service uh, is critical for individuals, but it doesn't stop there. Constituency service includes big businesses, medium-sized businesses, and small businesses in this state. Yeah. And how closely do you work with the governor's office and this incredible governor, which by the way, in my opinion, and I know he's got a high approval rating, Still, in my opinion, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. <laughs> I mean, you're yeah. talking about we were devastated. Think about where we were. And look where we are today. Think where we were eight years ago and where we are today. And it has a lot to do with the leadership that we have I at agree. all levels, local, state, and federal. I agree, I agree. The kind of leadership that we have here in the state of Nevada right now has changed this community, has changed the state. Yeah. And the governor should take a, a, a bow. And how closely uh, do you work is. with the governor? Very closely. I sent him a text the other day. He probably doesn't want me to say this on TV, but I congratulate him on his yeah. on his new marriage. Good for him. But uh, yeah, good for him. But very closely, we couldn't get any of this stuff done. We well, obviously we bounce a lot of ideas off of him. We don't always agree uh, as uh, as the press will play that out. Yep. But uh, probably ninety percent of the time we do. We'll be back with our last segment with U.S. Senator Dean Heller in a moment. Welcome back to our last segment with U.S. US Senator Dean Heller. Honored to have you here today. Peter, thank you. How do you feel your uh, relationship is with the Hispanic community? With? The Latin Chamber, just in general. How do you, f you feel good about it? I do. In fact, I think they're thriving. I can't guarantee success for anybody. But I go back to Washington trying to facilitate what's the best way to move all these communities together. My, my mantra is that everybody needs an equal opportunity to succeed. That's the way this country is based on. That was the foundation of it. And when I'm in Washington, D.C., I want everybody. I want everybody to prosper. Of course. And that's the way I look at the laws and the rules uh, that we have in Washington, D.C. And I look at this tax bill. I look at this tax bill where we brought all this capital back into this country. We reduced individual tax rates. We, we reduced our corporate tax rates so they were uh, competitive uh, worldwide. And look at the results. Look at the results uh, for this community. Uh, look at the uh, results for... Uh, the, the Asian community, take a look at uh, what's going on out there right now. I am thrilled because I, I, I know that uh, if they thrive, their families thrive. And I know how important that is to them. Their families thrive, they're in their homes, they're educating their children, they, uh, they, uh, they can purchase their vehicles, all of that. Um, Which is good for the whole community. Whole community. And, and I can feel it out there right now. People are pleased thrilled the direction that this economy is going so anyway I, I i feel very positive let me put it that very very positive uh, that they can meet the goals that they want to in their lives obviously where we could uh where there is room for improvement is immigration i sure. mean are we ever going to get immigration reform uh, i think the uncertainty the worry i think it actually hurts our economy i think we could even be booming even more if sure, we had, sure. if not we had good immigration yeah, reform not healthy um, I would uh, argue that there's three things that need to happen that I think Republicans and Democrats can't agree on. And one is we need to secure the borders. First thing we need to do is secure the borders. Second thing we need to do 
is that if there's a if there's a criminal element out there that's coming across the borders, we got to get them out of the country. Of Those two things. And three is immigration reform, and there has to be a pathway. And I have supported the pathway, as you and I know, Peter. I have supported that pathway. I think we can agree on those three principles. And if we can, get both sides just giving up a little bit, just both sides giving up a little bit, you know, we can put together a piece of legislation that works for everybody and long term help the economy and grow the economy, uh, just like you mentioned. Yeah. I know you have an incredible family, incredible wife, kids. I do. Tell I us do. a little bit about that. Ah, they're wonderful. My youngest just got married. Just got married a couple of weeks ago to a wonderful young man. And by the way, by the way, this is, when you talk about things that matter, my uh, oldest daughter, who has two children, just adopted a two-year-old Chinese girl. Went around the other side of the world, picked up this little two-year-old girl. She's been with us for about three or four months. Do you know she didn't cry? She didn't cry when she was hurt. She didn't cry when she was hungry. She didn't cry uh, because she'd been in an orphanage for two wow. years. Do you know in four months all that's changed? <laughs> it's all changed. <laughs> it's all changed. But she knows she has some people around her that yeah. love her. Yeah. And we have changed this little girl's life. That's beautiful. And now she'll be able to achieve any goal in her life that she wants to because we brought her back to America. And I think that's what this country is all about. Yeah. So, Senator, tell us about your future. How far out do you think about things? Well, as, uh, as, as I tell people when I'm asked, when I'm asked why I do this, is that I'll continue to do this as long as the good outweighs the bad. And right now, the good far outweighs the bad. Um, the bad, of course, is that you're away from your family a lot. You got to do that traveling back and forth from Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's a headache. But the good is, is that I'm in the majority. Uh, we have a Republican president. Um, I'm on the committees that I want finance committee, banking committee, I can do a lot of good for this community. And I'm able to achieve it. I've passed 40 pieces of legislation in this session alone. Wow. And a lot of it affects, of course, our veterans and, and the veterans community. But a lot of it had to do with the tax bill. I helped write that thing when I was in the Ways and Means Committee. And, and it took 10 years. And finally, I was in the United States Senate. All we were waiting for is a president that would sign it. Yeah. We just put it on the shelf. And then Trump got elected. We took it off the shelf, blew off the dust, sent it over to the White House. Take a look at this. They made their changes. And, and it couldn't happen without a Republican president. So it's good. Right now, it's very, very good. That can all change. You know, you know that can all change. But right now, I do this because uh, the future is bright. The future is good for this community. And uh, it's, it's, it's good for uh, every minority community that we have around this country right now. I think things are very, very positive, And I want to maintain that. Excellent. Well, you know, you have a great relationship with the Latin Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. We're going to continue working together. I appreciate that, too. Yeah, we are. It means a lot to me. Uh, it means a lot to us as well. I want to thank Senator Dean Heller for coming on Influencers today. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Influencers. Until we see each other again, stay positive and stay motivated. Thank you.